even despite the guilt from those extra calories. Not to dissuade you from enjoying those treats, but there may be another form of guilt hidden beneath the crispy and delicious surface of that store-bought cookie. Consequences that are baked right in with the ingredients. You see, that cookie might contain palm oil from Indonesia, soy from Brazil, cocoa from Cote d'Ivoire, milk from Colombian cattle. Even the paper and the packaging could be sourced from any of these areas. In each of these commodities, are connected to issues of deforestation, conversion of other ecosystems, and human rights violations. The purpose of this speech is not to pick on chocolate chip cookies. I'm a big fan, to be perfectly honest. But this does serve as a useful tool for illustrating some of the challenges for many consumer goods that companies and others face in eliminating these issues from supply chains. So using a cookie as our guide, we're going to take a look at some of the inherent complexities in global commodity supply chains and their links to environmental and social issues. And we'll introduce the newly released, just as of last week, accountability framework as a vital tool to help address these challenges. We know that asking billions of people worldwide to stop eating cookies is an unrealistic solution. But as a promising step forward, a very, a very uh, uh, cause for hope is that hundreds of companies worldwide in recent years have made pledges to, to address these issues in their supply chains and have made public commitments to eliminate these issues. But despite the pledges to do so, real progress on the ground remains limited. Very few of the targets that companies set for 2020 will be achieved. And for those companies that are making progress, they have difficulties in credibly demonstrating this to an increasingly skeptical public. Part of the problem lies in the complexity of these global supply chains. The challenges are many. Difficulties in visibility of the supply chain, managing non-compliant suppliers, traceability with smallholder farmers, and for products linked to multiple value chains across varied commodities and regions, the challenges are even greater. Another challenge relates to the difficulties in measuring progress. With multiple standards, systems, tools, and metrics for any given commodity or region, it's difficult to assess whether a company has fulfilled its commitment to ethical sourcing. Closing the implementation gap between setting these commitments and demonstrating real progress on the ground calls for a new path forward. The Accountability Framework Initiative, or AFI, emerged in 2017 as a response to these challenges. The AFI seeks to clarify what good looks like for companies in setting, implementing, and demonstrating progress on ethical supply chain commitments in agriculture and forestry. The AFI has developed and published, as of last week, the Accountability Framework, a set of common principles, guidance, and definitions based on a working consensus of leading environmental and social organizations. Developed through an open consultation process with stakeholders around the world over the past two years, the framework builds on existing efforts and reflects the collective experience of companies, NGOs, governments, and other actors for what good looks like in achieving ethical supply chains. The framework aims to be an essential guide for companies and others committed to eliminating deforestation, conversion, and human rights issues. So how will the framework help? Recipes don't typically mix different measurement systems using the metric system for some ingredients, the imperial system for other ingredients two milliliters of this, four grams of that, it's a recipe for a headache. Some might argue that the imperial system of measurement is a headache in and of, in and of itself, but that's another conversation. This is simply not an efficient way to cook. Likewise, it's difficult to ensure supplies of ethically produced products without a consistent system for everyone involved in producing, processing, and trading in forest risk commodities. 
The framework provides consistent measures of progress across commodities, regions, and supply chain positions. In this way, soy producers in South America, cocoa producers in West Africa, and multinational retailers can all use the same terms, norms, and metrics to define, implement, and monitor their policies and commitments. This increased standardization also facilitates better alignment between private sector, government, and other actors. In this way, it's easier to promote good practices and to hold accountable those whose actions fall short of their pledges. Knowing that these complex supply chains cannot be transformed overnight, the framework presents a path for companies to credibly demonstrate continuous improvement and fulfillment of commitments across their value chains. Companies can report progress for commodities at different stages on the path to fulfilling commitments. The use of common metrics enables companies to track improvement processes over time and to share data across their supply chain networks, and in turn demonstrate progress in a credible way to their customers, investors, and other stakeholders. So, what is in the framework? And how can companies and others apply it to more effectively fulfill their supply chain commitments? The framework is a guidebook to ethical supply chains with three main parts. Core principles, operational guidance, and definitions. Core principles help to set up the kitchen, so to speak. Many cookbooks begin with some details on fundamental techniques, ingredients, equipment, and so forth, putting everything in its right place before you start to cook. The mise en place, as a chef might say. This helps to ensure that different cooks who set out to make the same recipe are going to end up with similar results. If you want to make a cookie, so you don't end up making a pancake. Likewise, companies or others can use the core principles as their mise en place to set their commitments knowing that they have the right set of ingredients and tools that they need for the job. In this way, they can feel confident that their efforts are likely to lead to desired results. The operational guidance then provides additional detail, a set of recipes for addressing specific challenges and situations common to supply chains, regardless of commodity or region. Whether the goal is to produce ethically sourced cookies or hamburgers, shampoo or shoe boxes, or whether the challenges are to address traceability issues or establish new development with minimal impact to people and nature. The OG, the operational guidance, provides the detail to implement commitments in a way that leads to credible results. And then the definitions ensure that we're all talking about the same thing. If I were to tell a British colleague that I was gonna put gravy on my biscuits, she might be horrified perfectly normal here in the southern United States. Likewise, how we define what a forest is, or what no deforestation means, can make all the difference in how the implementation of a commitment is measured, and whether we get the results we want to achieve. We know that the milestones we hope to achieve by 2020 will not be met. But while time is limited, we can now see a path forward. To achieve the progress we all hope to make in protecting nature and people, we need harmonized approaches that all supply chain, supply chain actors can refer to and apply. We need standardized, increased standardization guided by common principles and practices. Collaborative efforts such as the accountability framework will serve as a vital tool in this mission. Companies and other supply chain actors can move from commitments to action to results. Forests can be conserved and human rights can be respected. 2020 is just a signpost on the journey to making these ethical practices the new business as usual. We have the recipe for an ethical de deforestation-free cookie. It's time to start baking. And as we achieve this, we can enjoy our cookies without worrying about anything but the extra calories. Thank you. <laughs>